What's up guys, I thought I was going to talk about the Senate elections again now because a lot of new polls have come out, especially for the key races across the country. And I want to talk mostly about them, the four pickup opportunities that the Republicans have that are left as Tulsa pair plus Wisconsin plus Pennsylvania. But to be honest, we can start by filling in them as a leaning Republican. Okay, you know what, maybe not Pennsylvania because we still don't know a lot about the candidates there. Uh, okay, I wanted to start, let's go out to Arizona, because in the latest polls here, we don't have any polls that take Blake Masters up against Mark Kelly since the one from September, which, I mean, it had everyone, every Republican in the mid-30s against Kelly, and that's obviously not going to happen. But one here has Mark Kelly, 50 to a dog deuce, he's 47, but he's not running. But that's really strange, because it has Mark Kelly up only two against Mark Burnovich. Now, Doug Ducey, the popular incumbent governor, you would expect him to do better than Mark Burnovich, but this is actually the same polling for data for progress. It is a Democratic internal, but the fact that the Democratic internal is just showing the Democrat up by th three points in Arizona, this is the state that most polls showed Biden winning by a lot, and of course it ended up being really close. So in a state like Arizona that underestimates Republicans, you can expect that it uh, would probably go to the Republicans if the Democrat is only up by that margin in a Democrat internal poll. Now going to the state of Nevada, this one actually has the Republican up by uh, quite a lot in different polls. Uh, 4 points, 3 points, uh, 10, but this one is definitely an outlier. But the thing is that Nevada is opposite from Arizona. It overestimates Republicans, so they cannot take anything for granted in Nevada. Adam Laxalt, however, has sort of cleared the primary field, and it is a very prime pickup opportunity, and I think that it is going to flip along with Arizona and Georgia. And this is polls from Georgia. They are showing Herschel Walker up against Raphael Warnock. One point only in the aggregates, and they show Gary Black down by like six and a half, but I don't think that would happen, he just is so unknown. But if it was the GOP nominee and was endorsed by like McCarthy, DeSantis, Trump and all of those, then it would be something else entirely. But Herschel Walker is doing well in polling in Georgia as of 2022. And because of that I think it is, along with Arizona and Nevada, looking more and more likely to flip. So the state of New Hampshire is, of course, the outlier, because in the polls here, Maggie Hassan is up against everyone. She is up by a lot against Chuck Morris, but I think that if you work a lot with name recognition and getting making the GOP and get used to him, it's probably going to change. Of course, he is not going to win just 32% of the vote if he is the nominee in uh, the Senate election in New Hampshire. That's not going to happen. We're t talking probably about at least 45% to pretty much any Republican nominee that doesn't do a major mistake. So Don Bolduc is actually much closer to Hassan. And I don't know whether to trust this, but if it is, if these polls are accurate, then that's certainly a good plus for Bolduc in the primary. And I don't know if there has been a lot of polling between the GOP primary opponents. It has not, as far as I can see. But anyway, it sort of makes New Hampshire a bit less likely to flip. Uh, a few months ago, this was the most likely seat to flip, in my opinion, because Chris Sununi was probably going to be the nominee. Now, it's the least likely Democratic seat to flip out of these four. And of course, you have Wisconsin, where Ron Johnson is running for re-election, and he did win in the presidential election year. He is going to win again if it's a red wave year. And you have Oz and McCormick and the others against Connor Lamb or Fetterman in Pennsylvania. I think that especially Oz has a good chance to win. The problem with McCormick, which I'm not sure if I've talked a lot about, is that he has a past with both shipping jobs overseas and being in favor of so-called skilled migration. Uh, when you are for skilled migration, it basically says that let's get expert from Let's get experts from India and China over here so they can take uh, the top jobs and make it even harder for Americans to get the top jobs. It makes the it ensures that your children will have to do even better in college to have a chance at a good career, and it's just a mess. So 
definitely Oz, I think, has the best chance in the state of Pennsylvania. Now, currently, there are not a lot of polls out there, and no, none of them actually have the Republicans up. You don't have anything with McCormick, and there has been very limited with polls overall. But if you look at the Republican primary, Oz is in the lead, but with so many undecided, it's really no way of knowing who is going to be the nominee. I have not seen anything with McCormick yet, so I don't know how strong he will be. But out of the remaining ones, I I have to say that the most based ones, those with probably the best policies, are not going to be polling high and are not going to have a realistic shot at the nomination. It's probably going to be Oz, to be honest. And he's not polling too bad, I mean only two behind Fetterman so early. And that is obviously going to change. Inside elections has it tilt R, uh, the other ones has it as toss up. But because of the national environment and the unpopularity of Biden, I'm also going to have it, well, at lean R, TBH. Alright, so to finish it up, I wanted to talk a little bit about the people that I personally would like to endorse and are supporting. I was a very early supporter of Lack South in Nevada. I mean, before the 2020 election, I was hoping he would run and all of that. Johnson, the incumbent in Wisconsin, of course. Rubio, he is more, well, meh on the issues, but I mean, he is just an electoral juggernaut who's going to take that to the bank and put Florida really in the safe column for the GOP. Mo Brooks in Alabama. The person he is running against in Alabama is just another milk toast candidate. Of course, you have Blake Masters in Arizona, and someone who has a little less chance at winning. Tiffany Smiley in Washington, though she is probably going to be the nominee, that the general election is the challenge over there. As it is in Colorado, where Eli Bramer is probably going to be the nominee. And in Alaska, it is the other way around. The primary is the challenge for Kelly Chewbacca, who is going to have a good shot at taking out Rhino, Lisa Murkowski, in that state. And I've still not made any endorsements in Ohio, Missouri, or North Carolina. I'd still struggle to find my favorites. But in North Carolina, Ted Budd is certainly leading, and Bernie Moreno is looking good in Ohio, and there are just too many okay candidates in Missouri. Meanwhile, Oz and Pollock are fighting it out in New Hampshire, and we will see about Pennsylvania. But anyways, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.